Everybody, welcome to the video. It's Wednesday, September 1st, and we're breaking down the split slate day we have over on DraftKings today. We have a three-game early slate and an 11-game main slate tonight, which has a load of good pitching. As you can see, top left-hand corner of your screen, we have a lot of good pitchers listed, and there's some really good stacks, too. So I'm definitely looking forward to tonight's slate. And if you do find this video helpful in any way possible, please leave a like, subscribe to the channel if you haven't yet already. If you want to take that one step further, become an official member over on Patreon. Now's the best time to do so since it's the first of the month, and we'll have three sports going on. NFL, NASCAR, and MLB, if you do want to sign up, there's a lot of content over there, and I think you will find it helpful. And last but not least, this video is sponsored by Prize Picks. I'm sure most of you know what it is by now, but if you don't, it's Daily Fantasy Sports Simplified, just you versus the projections. There's no Sharks, 150 Max Contest, or salary cap restrictions, or anything like that. Just you versus the price of the offer each and every single day. And as of right now, if you're a new signee over on Prize Picks, you can use code CPEN to get a free money bonus. That's an instant deposit match up to $100. When you tell them I sent you, but I think it'll be up for the plugs for the most part. So without further ado, let's dive into today's video. And as always, we'll start with the pitching, then move on to the bats. And since we're going to talk about both slates here, it's going to be kind of a quick hitter on the early slate because we only have three games. There's not really many things that stand out to me. But we'll start with the two early slate guys I have listed here. One's going to be you, Darvish, 9300 bucks. He's going to be your SP1 in the slate. Arizona has been terrible the past two games versus Padres pitching. Paddock returning from the IL did very well versus them. And then Blake Snell last night had a no-hitter through seven innings. They pulled him, ended up losing that no-hitter combined, but still, I mean... The Diamondbacks have been terrible the past couple games. And while you Darvish hasn't exactly been my most favorite pitcher to roster this year because he seems to kill me each and every single time I roster him, I think it'll be pretty hard to fade him on a three-game slate with not that many great options. So at 9300 bucks, I think the price point's fine. If we're looking at his numbers on the season, I mean, he's overall been a good pitcher, but he's definitely had his struggles. He already close to four, but next pip at 3.6. The Sierra's really good at 3.3, close to a 30% carry. Doesn't really walk too many guys. The one problem with him is he gives up power close to a 200 ISO given up on the season, a 45% fly ball rate. But fortunately enough for him, the Diamondbacks barely have any power whatsoever versus right-handed pitching. They're a lot worse versus righties than they are versus lefties, boasting a 24.7% carry to right-handed pitching, only a 135 team ISO, an 80 WRC plus, and only a 294 WOBA. So I think at least like you can roster Darvish with a little bit of confidence, although it never feels that great. Then as far as your SP2 goes, you could play Kyle Freeland versus the Texas Rangers, but I prefer Jake Odorizzi at 6700 bucks, just really cheap. I know he's not a very good pitcher, but he gets a great matchup versus Seattle. A 4.02 implied team total against him is a slight favorite here and a 4.5k prop over in Vegas and well I could talk his numbers up but there's really nothing too good to say he does have a carry rate above 20% but that's nothing to really brag about too much an ERA around 4.5 XFIP and Sierra are even worse than that so I guess he's been getting a little bit lucky over a 200 ISO given up I really don't have many good things to say about Jacob Rizzi but the same can be said for Kyle Freeland and Oda Rizzi I think is at a pretty fair price point gets a great matchup Seattle strikes at over 25% of the time versus right-handed pitching so if you can just stomach rostering Jacob Rizzi I mean, I think he's probably the most viable SP2 option. Plus, with this pitching pairing, $9,300 and $6,700, you can definitely afford pretty much all the bats that you want today as long as you find a value bat here or there. But that's pretty much it for the early sites. We'll move on to the late site. We have a lot of good aces to talk about. I will say Aaron Nola is on this site versus Washington. I think it's a very good spot, although it looks like it's going to rain all night. So I am pretty much crossing him off the list here. If it happens to be a ghost somehow, I don't think it's going to be. But if it happens to be, I do like Aaron Nola tonight quite a bit. But I'm just going to assume that game does not play. And we'll set up top here with Max Scherzer, $10,900. Very similar spot to Walker Buehler last night where he's pretty expensive. I don't really love the matchup, but he's been one of the best pitchers in baseball this year. Max has been awesome pretty much all season long. Only a 3.17 implied team total against him. Pretty heavy favorite, 8K prop over in Vegas. And his numbers on the year, I mean, 2.5 ERA, 3.3 XFIP, 2.9 Sierra. Not a 35% carry, just only walked too many guys that were 12Ks per nine. He gives up a lot of fly balls, though, close to a 50% fly ball rate and a 33% hard contact rate. So I wouldn't be surprised if he maybe gives up a solo shot or two versus a guy like Freddie Freeman or Ozzy Albies or something like that. But I think the strikeouts are going to be there. Atlanta's a team that will strike out close to 24-25% of the time versus right-handed pitching. So if you have the money for Max, I think he's definitely one of the best plays on the slate today. Dropping out of Chris Sale, $10,400. If you can't quite afford Max, I mean, Chris Sale pretty much has similar upside. It's a smaller sample size this year of only 15.1 innings pitched, but he does have a 34.4% K rate, a walk rate below 5%, a real nice 2.3 year with the next up around the same numbers. Same goes for the Sierra, averaging about 80 pitches per game so far, which isn't amazing. Like, we can't expect Chris Sale to come in here and throw 100 plus pitches. So Max Scherzer definitely has a longer leash which makes him a little bit safer, and he's only $500 more. It's just the matchup versus Tampa. I like it a little bit better because they do strike out quite a bit versus lefties. Obviously, the addition of Nelson Cruz is going to help them out versus left-handed pitching, but they're still striking out over 26% of the time versus them. WRC plus below 100. They've been a much better team this season 
versus ready. So I think Chris Sale going to the trap, one of the best places to pitch in all of baseball. It's definitely a park upgrade going from Fenway to the trap. So I think that's going to work in Sale's favor as well. Kind of a higher implied team total than I would expect here at 3.76. It's pretty much an even pick on who's going to win this game, a 7.5 K prop. I mean, there's really not that many downsides with Chris Sale. It's just there's a lot of other good pitching options. So I definitely don't think he's a must today. Carlos Rodon, $10,100. Lucas Giolito, he was pitching well last night, but he ended up getting hurt. So I think he finished with, what, 11 fantasy points. Although I think before he got hurt, he had 16. Got a couple guys on, got removed from the game. Obviously did not end that well, but Pittsburgh is a team we can pick on each and every single day. And Rodon has been awesome this season. He has the highest carry rate of all the pitches we're talking about right now. He's sitting at 35.1%. Guys like Max are below 35. Same goes for Chris Sale. Garrett Cole's even below 35%. Like Rodon has had an excellent K rate this season. Obviously, he's not as good as the other guys we're going to talk about, but I love the matchup versus Pittsburgh. Only a 3.07 implied team total against him. Extremely heavy favorite. 7K prop over in Vegas. I already talked about the strikeout numbers, which are obviously fantastic. Doesn't give up too much power, which I love. And he is facing a team that has absolutely zero power versus lefties this year. They don't really strike out too much, only 22.5% of the time, but a 122 team ISO. A 78 WRC plus, which is absolutely terrible, and only a 287 Woba. So as far as safety goes, Carlos Rodon is definitely in a very, very safe spot. I would be very surprised if he does not get that 4.1 bonus, which can always go a long way over on DK. And Garrett Cole, 9900 bucks. I could see the chalk being Carlos Rodon and Garrett Cole today as far as prices go, because these guys all have similar upside, in my opinion, like very similar projections. But you can save close to $1,000 on Rodon and Garrett Cole from a guy like Max Scherzer. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with Scherzer today. I'm definitely going to have exposure to him. But as far as cash games go, if you just want to roster Rodon and Garrett Cole, save some money and get defensive bet in. I don't hate it. But you can make a case for any of these four pitchers in cash games today. It just depends on your roster construction. But I love Garrett Cole here. I mean, he's been awesome pretty much all season long. He's had a couple of blow-up games, but I can't see that really happening on the road here in L.A. I realize it's been kind of a hitter-friendly park this year. But still only a 3.3 implied team total against them. Really heavy favorite. Love the Yankee stack once again tonight in the AK prop over in Vegas. And outside of Shoyo Otani, if you can limit the damage to Shoyo Otani and maybe even Jared Walsh. I mean, I know he's not the greatest hitter out there, but he still has some pop versus righties. Garrett Cole should be just fine in this matchup. Close to a 34.5% carry on the season. Exhibit 2.8. Same with the Sierra. He doesn't really walk many guys. Doesn't give too much power. Has a lean to the ground balls, although it is close. But, I mean, I love Garrett Cole in this spot. Below 10K. Not really sure why he's this cheap. He should be... Pretty much right around where Max Scherzer and Chris Sale are, so I feel like you're getting a really big discount. I mean, $1,000 cheaper than Max Scherzer, so you have Garrett Cole projected slightly higher than Max tonight. So, I mean, it's going to be really hard not to want to play Garrett Cole in cash games tonight because of that price point, but I love all these pitchers. And Kevin Gosman, $8,700. He has definitely kind of faded away as the season has progressed, but I still like the spot here versus Milwaukee. They're a team that will strike out versus righties. Only 3.37 implied team total against him. And I like this price point quite a bit, only $8,700. And he has a 28.8% K rate in the season. He'll walk some guys, but he doesn't give up much power whatsoever. Has a lean to the ground balls. Doesn't give up many homers. Coming in a slight favorite at home here. I prefer the, paying up the extra $1,000 for more safety, in my opinion, with guys like Garrett Cole, Carlos Rodon, and the others. But if you need to save some money, I think Kevin Gosman is an excellent tournament pitcher on tonight's slate. Because I don't think his ownership is going to be anything too crazy because the guys up top are going to carry the majority of the ownership tonight. But as far as pitching goes, I think that'll be pretty much it. There are some other decent pitching options that I did not talk about, but for the sake of time, I think we'll move right over to today's stacks. And we'll start with the early slate stacks, and there's only going to be one I want to talk about, but it's the San Diego Padres on the road in Arizona versus Luke Weaver, who allows a ton of hard contact. I don't think Weaver absolutely sucks, but he allows nearly a 50% hard contact rate. So, yeah, a lot of these guys can hit the ball hard on San Diego, so I think they're definitely the top spot here. We have a team total north of five, which no other team can claim. But Trent Grisham, I like all the lefties for the most part. The righties are certainly going to still be again play. The righties are still going to be in play. Like, I'm not going to fade Manny Machado or Fernando Tatis just because I prefer the lefties more, but I think the lefties are in overall better spots. But, I mean, two of the best hitters on this team are righties. So, either way, like the entire lineup here, Trent Gresham, Jake Cronenworth, their price tags aren't terrible on those guys. Eric Hosmer is a dirt sheet, below 3000 bucks. I could see him being the extreme chalk at first base on the other slate today. Will Myers, Austin Nola, Adam Frazier. The entire lineup is in play. Obviously, we can't play on nine of these guys. So you have to find some other one-offs from other teams. I kind of prefer the Rockies versus Arihara here, but... For the most part, the single Padres are definitely my favorite stack on today's early slate. Moving on over to the main slate, we have the Toronto Blue Jays at home versus Matt Harvey, a guy that we can always use the opposing team against. We have a team tour north of six for what feels like the third day in a row now, although any single time you're facing the Orioles, the opposing team is always going to look pretty juicy. And we just so happen to have one of the best offenses in baseball. They kind of sucked last night versus Keegan Aiken, but... We'll take our L there and move on, but I think this is definitely a really good bounce back spot. I prefer using lefties versus Matt Harvey. The problem is this is a very ready heavy lineup. The only lefties we have here, at least projected, are Corey Dickerson and Gerard Dyson. But we can still use righties against them. The Orioles bullpen is not very good. 
outside of Vlad last night, this team really sucked. I know Bobichet had a couple of doubles, but I mean, a Vlad Homer is kind of just expected at this point. But I love the entire lineup here. George Springer is still one of the top options, assuming he is okay. I think he left the game last night with an injury. I'm going to assume he's back in the lineup. If not, obviously we'll have to adjust there. But Marcus Simeon, Vlad, Bichette, Teoscar, like all the Blue Jays here. I mean, it's definitely the top spot, although it does come with a hefty price tag. And if we're double swinging up for pitcher today, it might not be the most viable stack point per dollar wise. Moving on over to the Oakland days, they did some damage last night versus Scooble and company. I would not be surprised if it happens once again in an even softer matchup versus Willie Peralta like coming off the IL. We have a team total north of five and a quarter here. And this is a very good hitting team. I'm not sure they're going to put up near double digit runs again, but Willie Peralta is a guy that I am not scared of whatsoever, getting up close to a 200 ISO on the season. And if you guys forgot about Willie Peralta, he was the guy that had an ERA like three or four runs lower than his acceptance here. He kept being due for regression. It kept not happening, but he finally got hit a little bit. But I like all the Oakland days here quite a bit. Mark Cannon leading off looks very, very enticing. Only 4200 bucks. Marte and Olsen are super expensive, but Matt Olsen is one of the top overall plays in the slate projection-wise. I'm not sure I'm going to be able to get to him because I am going to be spending up for pitching today. So I'm not sure I'm going to be able to afford a near 6K Matt Olsen, but I definitely love the spot quite a bit. Lowry, Harrison, Chapman, Kemp, Sean Murphy, Ellis Andrews, all these guys are going to be in play. Then moving on over to the Chicago White Sox, another team that kind of disappointed last night, but they had another fantastic matchup versus Pittsburgh. They really don't have any good pitchers, so every single time your team faces Pittsburgh, they're probably going to be in play. And did we just so happen to have one of the best offenses in baseball here at the Chicago White Sox. Team total close to five and a half, and pretty much everybody's in play here. They're kind of starting to price up Luis Roberts, so he's no longer that extreme value, but he's certainly going to be in play leading off here. Mancada, Abreu, he went deep last night. Eli Menez, Grandal, he went deep. I mean, they were the only two that actually did anything last night. It was a very disappointing stack. I mean, I had a lot of White Sox. Did absolutely nothing whatsoever. Goodwin, Bond, Garcia, Cesar Hernandez. There's really no easy outs here. I definitely feel pretty confident loading up on these guys. Uh, the pitcher does not have a big sample size, so I hate to really look into anything too much. But in his small sample size so far, 20 innings pitched, we have a 7.2 ERA. 5.5 xFIP, K rate below 20%, and close to a 200 ISO, given up with a near 45% flat ball rate and over a 30% hard contact rate. So, I realize they disappointed last night. It's all the better reason to go back in tournaments. And then moving on over to the New York Yankees, they get a pretty good matchup on the road in LA versus Packy, the lefty. And I pretty much like the entire lineup here. I mean, at some point, the lefties are going to see righties. I prefer the righties just because we're facing a lefty first off, but we still have a team total above five here. They're going to see righties at some point, and the lefties are pretty cheap. I mean, Anthony Rizzo below 4K. Joey Gallo is still below 5K, which he has all the power in the world. Obviously, he's kind of a bit of a hit-or-miss guy, but I mean, the lefties are fine in tournaments, but the righties look very nice. DJ leading off only 4K. Aaron Judge, I mean, he crushes left-handed pitching. John Close Stanton, same for him. Luke Voigt's only 3400 bucks. Maybe he gets bumped up in the order a little bit. If he does, great. If not, I still think he's playable batting six. Urshela, Kyle Higashioka, 2900 bucks. He's usually the catcher with Garrett Cole, so... I like him below 3K quite a bit. Andrew Velasquez here at the bottom is only $2,100, although I hate kind of rostering guys that hit that low. But if you need cheap shorts out tonight, don't hate it on what should be a really good stack. And then moving on to the last thing I want to talk about, we have the Minnesota Twins at home versus Justin Steele, who actually has a decent K rate this year, but he is giving up an ISO close to 200 and a couple homers per nine. So I definitely think we can use the Twins as a very cheap stack today, whether you want to use one-offs here or a mini stack to be able to afford a more expensive stack like the Toronto Blue Jays today with your expensive pitching. But Byron Buxton, love him versus lefties. I realize I keep wanting to play him each and every single day, and it's really not been that great because he hasn't really been doing anything, although his numbers on the season are fantastic. I don't think anybody can argue that. I mean, returning from IL, obviously, I guess he's going to be a little bit rusty, but at some point here, he is going to smash. And on the season, I mean, we have a 369 batting average, 49 Woba, 398 ISO, 217 WRC+. Plus. Like, he just didn't randomly turn to dust. They got a hit last night. That was pretty much all he did. We have a team total close to five here. Leading off versus the lefty, only 3400 bucks. A guy that we saw close to 6 k earlier in the season. I mean, we're still getting a massive discount. I realize it just feels like we're chasing, but, I mean, at some point it's going to hit. And at 3400 bucks, he keeps failing. So I'm going to keep going back to it, hoping his ownership gets a little bit lower. But if you're playing cash games today, you're playing Byron Buxton. Jorge Polanco, like him versus lefties. Rob Snyder, 2300 bucks. We'll see if he's hitting this high in the order, but it could be a dirt cheap right lefty matchup. Donaldson's got pop versus lefties. Miguel Snow has actually been playing really well recently. I think he had a stolen base last night. Not that we could ever really expect that, but he's only 3600 bucks. Brent Rooker, Ryan Jeffer, Tortuga, and Dralton Simmons at the very bottom. But this is a very cheap team. The most expensive guy is only 4300 bucks. And we have a team total close to five today. And it should be a pretty good matchup versus the lefty Justin Steele. But with that being said, I think that'll be pretty much it for the video. So I hope it was helpful. And if it was, make sure to leave a like. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't yet already. If you want to take that one step further, become an official member over on Patreon. Link is down below in the description for that. And it's the first of the month, so it is the best time to sign up. We have three sports going on, so check it out whatever package you want. If you just want to join the Discord, you can do that as well. And don't forget, 
This video was sponsored by Price Picks, just you versus the projections. And as of right now, if you're new signing over on Price Picks, you can get a free money bonus up to $100 when you use code CPEN and tell them I sent you. But I think that'll be pretty much it. Hope you guys enjoy the start to your September, and I'll see you guys on Thursday for the next video.